Hello and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and I'm glad you could join me. Last time, uh, the last video I did, um, I hinted at the end of the video that we were going to handle the matte auto antenna tuners. I noticed in a, another video from another um, outlet, shall I say, that uh, the claim was that they were the exclusive distributors for matte tuners. Well, it's not actually true. Matte tuners are handled in the USA by uh, INRAD, and matte tuners, the manufacturers of these also uh, ATUs, approached us and said that they were anxious they had more than one distributor in the UK because they feared that uh, a particular um, supplier might try and hog the market so we said yes we're, we're quite happy to do that so just wanted to put that straight i can't vouch for the accuracy of the rest of that video but that <laughs> that bit is certainly not correct there we are now in the last video i also concentrated on microphones and talking about close speak and the popping and so forth that you get with them close speaking i want to continue with microphones but this time i'm going to talk about um, a desktop microphone that we've been uh, handling for quite a long time but we haven't actually pushed it as much as probably we should do. There, is, well, there was a good reason for this actually and that is that the microphone needed the appropriate lead to match your transceiver, rather like the higher range. And at one time the only lead available was an open-ended lead which made, meant that you had to put your own plug on. Well, perhaps, I don't know, 20 years ago, I might have been happy soldering on a, an 8-pin round plug onto the end of a cable. Um, I can't say that I'm so happy now because my eyes are not as good as they used to be, and I'm sure there's a lot of people, a lot of people out there uh, in the same situation. Fortunately, they now have a range of leads to match virtually any transceiver, whether it be modular or round pin connection, which is good news. So... Now, um, I'm able to really relaunch these uh, microphones. They're called, they're called Adonis, and they're made in Japan. They're high quality microphones. And what I've done, I've selected the middle of the range one to uh, take a look at. But before we look at the microphone, perhaps it's useful to sort of look at microphones generally. There are two types of microphones. There's the dynamic and the condenser. I mean, there are other uh, ones like the ribbon microphone, but for ham radio purposes, you either come across the dynamic moving core microphone or you come across the condenser. And the dynamic moving core microphone by, is by far and away the most popular one. The dynamic microphone is very good operating in high sound pressure levels. So for the spoken word, close speaking like a radio announcer, uh, close micing, recording drums, saxophone, trumpet, they're very, very good. Put them in front of a guitar amplifier cabinet, and again, they're happy. They work well. The condenser microphones are not so happy for close micing. They tend to be better if they're moved away from the sound source. So they would be ideal for a choir, for a string section in an orchestra, for perhaps a wind section, brass section in an orchestra, fine, even overhead um, drums, but put them close to the sound source and then they're, they're not so happy. The other advantage of a, of a condenser or capacitor microphone is the fact they do have an excellent frequency range. Their upper frequency range tends to be better than the uh, dynamic microphone. So there's pluses and minuses. Um, the other um, requirement for a capacitor microphone is it does need a voltage. Now this voltage is readily available on most mixers um, and amplifiers. Uh, there's a little button you press and it provides the sort of 48 volt phantom voltage up the uh, cable. It's not dangerous, it's just a, and it consumes a minute amount of current. It's just to polarise the, the capacitor. Um, that's not always available, of course, in, in hand radio equipment, which is probably why the dynamic microphone is still the, uh, the, the favourite. And quite honestly, the microphone that comes with the equipment is, is fine. I mean, a lot of people um, will use that microphone, the hand microphone that comes with it, and that's the only microphone they'll use. That, that's fine. But there are times when perhaps you want something different. 
Now, if you don't want a hand microphone, there are two other obvious choices. The one is the desktop microphone, which sits on the desk in front of you, or there's the headset that goes over your head with a boom microphone. Now, I always think headsets are sort of the Marmite product of the, uh, the ham radio station. You either like them or you don't like them. The advantage of a headset is it tends to sort of you focus you on what you're, what you're listening to. Um, if, if it's a particular type of headset, it will it will lock out the outside noises. You've got the, moon, the boom microphone there, and your hands are free. But some people find it claustrophobic. Some people find that they don't really want that thing on their heads. And I suppose some might just oh like buying a pair of shoes. Do you like the feel of it? Or don't you like the feel of it? So the middle ground tends to be a desktop microphone. Now a desktop microphone has all the advantages um, in as much as you've got hands-free, and hands-free is quite useful in the modern ham radio station because uh, if you're, uh, you've got your computer on and you want to look, look up the call sign on qrz.com or you've got an electronic login system, which most people have these days, then it's handy to have the, 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 the hands-free. So, that is one of the advantages of the, uh, the desk microphone. The other advantage is you can sit back a little bit. Well, we'll come to that when we actually look at the uh, microphone. So the microphone we're going to have a look at now is the AM5OAT model. Um, it's actually an electret microphone. Um, that's a variation on the capacitor microphone. Uh, it's got a good frequency response. It's got quite a good uh, output level. Well, it would have actually because it's got a built-in amplifier. Um, and it is quite happy for close speaking, so uh, unlike the conventional uh, condenser microphone, you don't have any problems with close speaking on this microphone. So let's take a look. Now this Adonis uh, microphone is a conventional desk microphone uh, with an adjustable gooseneck and it's got a built-in amplifier. The head unit itself is, has got a uh, metal grill to protect it and a nice mould in there so it looks quite smart. There's a range of uh, connecting leads to suit to almost every transceiver, rather like a higher range. You buy the microphone and then you buy the connector lead to match your transceiver. One end of the lead is marked with a red sticker and that's the part that goes into the back of the microphone. Well that pushes in and you just screw it up as you would on the main transceiver. The other end of the lead has got the appropriate connector to match your transceiver. You can get modular or round pin and each one is marked with the um, appropriate uh, transceiver connection. This is called a, a D88i which is the one that you'd use for ICOM 8-pin uh, connection transceivers. Now let's have a look at the base unit. On the left hand side there the first button is the power control. That switches the power on and off. And then on the other side you've got the up-down buttons which uh, move the frequency display on the transceiver, assuming that it has got that facility. Then further down you've got the PTT. This button here is the PTT. You press it on to transmit, release it, you're on receive. If you press this button here, you'll lock the transceiver on the transmit so you can sit back and have a QSO. And when you're finished, you just press that button there which releases it back to receive again. So let's have a peek underneath. You've got some more controls here. On the left hand side you've got the mode switch which switches between SSB and FM. That changes the uh, frequency response. Then the next control is the compressor control which is marked high and low. Actually low really means there's no compression at all um, as such. High gives you the um, compression that uh, increases the um, torque power. And then on the right hand side you've got something called VOL which is actually the volume level control. That's the screwdriver control there. That controls the output of the microphone so that you don't overload the input on your transceiver. And then further down here you've got this uh, compartment here which contains the AA battery cells. There are two small screws that hold the battery compartment in. Take that out and then you've got the conventional uh, AA battery holder for two AA cells and there's also four rubber feet underneath to um, make it stand uh, firm on the desk and uh, stop any scratching.
So now it's time to actually have a look at the AM508 <coughs> and uh, see exactly how it performs and uh, connect it up. So uh, we'll plug it into my uh, Icon IC9700 transceiver and uh, just see how it, how it works out. Well as I said before I'm going to use the IC9700 here as the uh, transceiver to test the microphone on and uh, I found something rather interesting actually. <laughs> Now I've plugged the uh, microphone into the IC9700 with the matching lead and if I pan the camera around to the microphone thus and I press this power button I think you can see the little LED light flashing which means to say the power's on but the interesting thing is there is no battery in the microphone. So the IC9700 is powering the microphone direct from the voltage coming out of the mic socket. Now this means to say of course that lucky owners of the IC9700 don't need to have any AA batteries in the microphone and I guess the same applies to the IC7300 and to the IC7610. So, it's going to be an ideal microphone for the ICOM radios. But anyway, let's just see how it works. Now as before, I've got the um, IC9700 output connected into a, uh, an audio recorder here. And I've pressed the monitor button on the IC9700 so that I can talk into the microphone the audio comes out of the headphone socket into the audio recorder and you can then hear what is happening so as I do this I will actually talk to you over the, using the Adonis microphone and not the recording microphone first test I'm going to do is to record the uh, ICOM microphone um, into the recorder. So let's uh, switch the recorder on. Hello test, hello test. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Hello test. Um, uh, this is G30JV Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor testing the ICOM microphone into the IC9700. G30JV Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor is testing the uh, microphone into the uh, IC9700. This is the microphone that comes with the 9700. All right, the next thing I'm going to do now is to record um, the Adonis microphone sit, uh, set to the FM mode, which gives a sort of a more full-bodied sound and no compression. So, here we go. Hello test, hello test. One, two, three, four, five. This is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor G30JV testing the uh, Adonis microphone uh, in the FM position and no compression. Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor is testing. Hello test. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the microphone over and I'm going to switch it into the sideband position. It'll go toppy. Hello test, hello test. Uh, G30JV Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. I think you can hear a bit more punch now. Uh, this is G30JV, Golf 3 Oscar, Juliet Victor. Not everybody's cup of tea for normal rag join, but probably okay for DX. Uh, Golf 3 Oscar, Juliet Victor, G30JV, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to switch back to FM and I'm going to switch on the compression and you'll hear the uh, difference. And I'll sit well away from the microphone. Hello test, hello test. This is G30JV, Golf 3 Oscar, Juliet Victor. Uh, this is with the microphone switched to compression. Um, you would need to strike a balance with the drive from the microphone into the transceiver um, because uh, um, you, you need to make sure that you don't overdrive the input into the, into the microphone. Um, and you've got the volume control at the bottom of the microphone to, to do that. So this is G30JV, Golf 3 Oscar, Julia Victor. Um, I'm in the um, FM mode, 
with the um, compression on. So this is the Adonis microphone in the compression mode with the uh, um, with the uh, FM uh, equalization on. So it gives more of a full bodied sound. I'm now going to go to sideband and it'll get quite choppy, I think. And here we are. Now we're in the sideband mode. Make sure I'm not overdriving the recorder. This is G3O JV Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. And I think you'll hear uh, the toppiness. It's um, personal preference. And of course, you can you can adjust the volume level um, on the radio to sort of tone it tone it down or whatever you like. Um, this is sort of armchair sit back, <laughs> I suppose. Um, so this is the Adonis microphone with the uh, compressor on in the sideband mode. In other words, we've got the extremes. So there we are. Right, take taking the recorder off. Turn that down. Take my headphones off. Sort of breather. Uh, there we are. So that's the um, that's the test of the Adonis microphone. Uh, I have used it on the air quite a bit actually, uh, and I purposely didn't ask for reports because I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the various positions and see what happens. <laughs> and at no time did anybody make any comments at all. Um, I did do some test subsequently to that uh, and they just really confirmed what I expected that the FM was more full bodied and I think FM actually the FM position on sideband would be quite good but I think if you're work if you're working DX or edge of the sort of maybe right on the edge there perhaps the uh, the bit of uh, top on SSB would um, would work out okay but we'll get down to personal preferences but nobody actually commented at all on the audio um, uh, so obviously it was it was it was passable. As soon as you ask, as soon as you get comments, of course, you get sort of people saying, "Well, I don't know. Perhaps I prefer this, and perhaps I prefer that." Um, only time will tell. But anyway, it uh, from my point of view, it uh, it's still the test. It's quite nice that with the Icon radio, you don't need the um, battery in this. I haven't got to worry about batteries at all. Um, the Icon radio will actually feed the uh, the microphone. Well, I was uh, very impressed with the uh, microphone actually, it worked extremely well. I, I can't get over the fact that uh, it worked so well with the Icon uh, 9700 and as I said um, during the demonstration that it will obviously work with the uh, 7300 and the 7610. Uh, the audio quality was good and of course the on-air tests um, um, proved to be successful. I, I, as I say, I deliberately didn't ask for reports until I'd had quite a few QSOs and I, I thought, well, there's obviously nothing fundamentally wrong with the audio. <laughs> so I then did some tests. And uh, I think generally speaking, um, leaving the microphone in the FM position, which gives slightly more, slightly more full-bodied sound, was what I preferred anyway. And I think most people liked it that way. Um, it would have been interesting, although I couldn't do it, but it would be interesting to sort of try the SSB position where the signal was right on the edge and whether that improved copy or not, I don't know. And of course, with microphones, everything depends not only on the microphone itself, but it also depends on the operator's voice. Now, some people have got uh, different voices, which, which is why. Um, singers very often they carry their own personal mic around with them it's the mic that makes them sound good <laughs> I mean very often the microphone makes them sound better than what they actually are uh, it's a well established fact of course that there isn't a perfect microphone and if you have a perfectly flat microphone very often it's not what is ideal for the situation particularly in music um, you get a microphone which tends to give a little bit more top or a little bit of, bit of sort of transparency which which sort of suits a particular instrument or a particular singer's voice. So there we are. But yeah, I was uh, impressed with that. Um, we are now stocking the full Adonis range of microphones and I think there's another one coming along actually but I'm not sure, sure what the details are. But I think the um, there is one below that which I think is just, which is £99. Um, so I, they're not overly expensive for what you get. They work well, they're nicely made, 
and uh, you just need to order the lead that goes with the uh, with a microphone to match your radio. There we are. So I hope it's been uh, interesting. Um, I enjoyed doing the tests, <laughs> and um, uh, I do thank you for watching the videos and thank you for pressing the subscribe button and uh, try to bring you things which I hope will be interesting and uh, informative and um, sometimes it's a product and sometimes it's something else. There we are. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Appreciate your company. Enjoy your home radio. Take care. See you soon. Bye.